So now we're at the tragic time where Jesus has died. You know, the crucifixion has occurred in its fullest. But we're not looking ahead yet. We take this moment to reflect, you know, upon a dead body, reflect upon the somberness and, you know, what's going on right now. Uh, there's two characters that we're going to meet. We're going to meet Joseph of Arimathea. I hope I'm saying that right. And another character we've been introduced to before, you know, if you follow the story of Jesus named Nicodemus. Uh, so first, you know, jo who is Joseph of Arimathea? Starting in Luke chapter 23, verses 50 through 51. Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man, who had not consented to their decision and action, the, meaning the decision and action of uh, the way that they treated Jesus. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he was waiting for the kingdom of God. So this is a man who, you know, he had the power, he was in a position of authority to make decisions and was in a position where he probably saw the way that the rest of the council treated Jesus. And it says that he didn't say anything. He didn't condone it. Um, but he also didn't say anything. He also didn't stand up and counteract it. He didn't stand up and be a voice of justice and grace for Jesus Christ. So he's a good and upright man. But, I, you know, I think in, this, in those moments he at least was somewhat cowardly. You know, he didn't speak up. He didn't help out. Uh, John chapter 19, verse 38 tells us a little bit more, it says that later Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jews, right? So this is a man who, yeah, he's a disciple of Jesus. Yes, he subscribes to what Jesus is teaching. Yes, he believes that he is the Messiah, but secretly. This is a man who fe he fears the Jews. He fears what's going to happen to himself, right? Now let's also take a moment and look at Nicodemus. Now if you remember uh, Mark's sermon about Nicodemus a while back, he talked about light and the darkness and the contrast of that. In John chapter 3, verses 1 through 2. As I turn there. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. So this is another man who's a member of the council in a position of power, but he too is a secret disciple of Jesus, secretly acknowledging who God is, secretly acknowledging that Jesus is from God, and that he is a man who is the person that they've been waiting for. But how interesting is it that they're both in secret, both of them are hiding how they feel about Jesus because they fear the powers of others. Until this. Going back to John chapter 19, starting in verse 38. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jews. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices and stripes of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. The question that is obviously arisen out of this is where do you need to become more public with your faith? For them to approach Pilate and verbally proclaim, we want the body of Jesus because we need to give it a proper burial, means that they do not believe that he was a heretic because why would you bury a heretic? Why would you spend the time to prepare him on the day of preparation? Why would you give him a tomb that hadn't been used and so it's not covered in death? This thing that was considered, you know, the, the worst of all things to Jews. Why would you do that? You would only do it if you believed that he was worthy of it. 
And so for Nicodemus and for Joseph of Arimathea to go and ask the Jewish leader, or ask the Roman leader, Pilate, we want this body. And we want to publicly take this body and, and adorn it and per, give it perfume and spend all of this, this money on it because we believe that the person, Jesus, was the Christ. Where do we need to become more public with that? Where do you need to become more public with your faith in Jesus Christ? What has he done for you? Who are the people that you're too shy to tell? Who are the people you're too scared to tell because you're scared of how they might react? In this moment, we recognize the dead body of Jesus Christ. And sometimes we can recognize our own dead faith in some areas. But it's not too late. The death of Jesus wasn't too late for Joseph and Nicodemus because we know their names and we know their story and we see this act of faith and it says they are good and upright people. You too, it's not too late for you. It's not too late for you to recognize the places that you've been dead in your faith, that you've been dragging your feet. Come forward, ask for the body of Christ and proclaim the good news of the life of Jesus Christ, the life that he lived, the miracles he did. Proclaim that in this moment of death as we take that moment.